In the eyes of ordinary people, this is a spoon. In the eyes of Morris, this is the key to escaping from prison. He first soiled the spoon on the sole of his shoe, then called out to the prison guard to apply for a new one. His teammate took the opportunity to attract the attention of the prison guard, and it looked like Morris just took a spoon. But in fact, there were two of them back in the interim. He will have a whole box of matches bundled together, put into the metal box, and then, with his helmet, use a coin to break the spoon, disassemble the nail clipper, put the wrong knife on the nail clipper, grind the coin a little bit into powder, and be done. Morris only needed to carefully connect the spoon cake and nail clipper, sprinkle a little powder, light a match, and down scenes of matches burning heat instantly melted coins, powder, the nail clipper, and the spoon handle, creating a new type of prison escape weapon. So, why did he make such a tool? Because just a few days ago, Morris inadvertently found a cockroach. Ordinary people don't care, but for Morris, who has a high IQ, this cockroach means a very important signal. It was already very old because it was situated on a small island in the sea. Humid air, which corroded the cement, and salt, which rusted the metal, gave them the conditions to dig the hole. And sure enough, using only a nail clipper, he slowly dug the hole. He dug at night, and next door, his helmet helped him wind up. The guards came, and they whistled to remind him. But soon the nail clippers could not dig. Morris was eager to get rid of the box. The jacket was on the floor, and he started working on the wall of the vent chisel with a handy guy, which was really half the work. But then the guards came over, and the wing companion saw, immediately in accordance with the agreement to blow the whistle. But because the mouth scoop could not blow, she had to pick up the cup knocking on the cell door in a hurry. Morris heard the guards' footsteps getting tighter and tighter, and hurried to put the box back in place throwing the jacket under the bed. At this time, the prison guard also happened to walk over. Prison guards always feel wrong but cannot find evidence. Fortunately, there was no danger. The next day, Morris took advantage of the release period, quietly scattering sand from the pockets to the ground, and soon the vent was expanded by him to the size of a person. But barbed wire was firmly welded to the iron post and simply could not be taken down. In the carpentry factory where he worked, he found a shoe that was particularly perfect. The only problem was that he was wrapped on both sides of the iron sheet, which would be detected by the metal detector. But Morris's high IQ is not covered. He took this directly to the hall without security checks. No doubt, the alarm sounded. He did not wait for the guards to speak. He directly raised the shoes in his hands and asked the guards themselves to take them back. He wanted to use it to hang clothes, but of course the guards would not agree. So they searched his body, but there was nothing to search out. Morris, disappointed at having to walk away and go back to the cell, pulled out another shoe from the root of the shoe, which is called the desire to capture, so that the sound of the east reached the west. Morris will then be a scorpion stuck in the barbed wire's edge. Gently kick hard twice, the barbed wire will be smoothly cut, and the barbed wire will be removed. Morris poked his head out and found that behind the wall, as he expected, was a pipe well, but it was not yet time to go out. The guards would be checking in at any time, and a disguise had to be made for himself. To buy time, he used the key down cement and newspaper mixed up to make a rectangular box. And on top, a layer of cement slurry and a fake vent. This completed the remaining materials. Morris used to make a dummy head, find flesh-colored paint, paint it, stick on the brows, pull off their own hair, and glue it to the top, and everything was ready. The next is the exciting moment using newspaper and clay to make a dummy head, painted with flesh-colored paint, with glued hair, and put into the quilt. It looks like they're asleep, and everything is ready. After he slowly drilled into the vent, he covered the fake wire mesh, and the prison guards, who knew that he had just entered the pipe, came over. Inspection. Companions heard footsteps and rushed to knock on the cell door alarm. The guards saw him sleeping so early, which was a little strange, but did not put it in their hearts. Morris climbed up the pipeline, came to the highest level of the prison, dodging patrolling guards, and continued to climb up. But the end of the road was actually a barred window, and very high from the ground. How he jumped could not reach it, and it seems that tonight is not an escape. On the other hand, the patrolling prison guard turned around and came back. He saw Morris still in a posture, feeling a little confused. He asked his Selma next door, why is Maurice asleep so early? The Selma replied that he was not feeling well. Suddenly the guard deliberately slipped his baton to the ground and made a loud noise, and Maurice remained motionless. The prison guard immediately felt the situation was not good. He carefully reached forward to try. Finished. Well, the head moved, and it turned out that Morris had come back in time. 
Morris explained what happened to him the night before at dinner. Several other people basically dug the vent. Only next door Selma Dennis has been for Morris to let the wind in. So the slowest progress. Morris brought a teammate to the top floor under the barred window again at night. Morris stepped on his accomplice up to see the barred window was firmly welded shut and wanted to open it only another way. The teammate was still too young. Morris's high IQ is not a cover. He found a small electric fan in the auditorium, which is not the motor. Then, with money from the rest of his life, he booked the wire and drill with the glasses. And the event was over. Morris, in front of the crowd, directly installed the electric fan into the instrument case. A move that directly scared Dennis Kist. Before leaving, the guard suddenly proposed to check Morris's case. Dennis was so scared that he peed again. But instead, Morris very calmly held up the case and casually checked. The guard looked at him and then at another particularly nervous Dennis. And he firmly chose to check the large fan. Morris took a long breath. The third time he set out, Morris was in charge of disassembling the electric fan and started assembling it with a drill he bought from the eye. While his companion needed to unload a piece of water pipe, Morris used the water pipe to pry open the edge of the iron bar. And just as he climbed up, he did not expect one of the iron bars to fall, emitting a loud boom sound, immediately attracting the attention of the patrol downstairs. Issuing a warning, he began to go upstairs, and Morris also began to drill holes into the barred window. Although the speed is very slow and the sound is good, but not much. At this time, the prison guards have come to the top floor, stopped, listened for a while, and did not find any abnormalities. At this time, Morris also finally finished the iron window. However, just when they were still planning the specific time, something happened. The man wanted to break out of prison, but did not want to. Just get ready. The warden suddenly came to check the room, swinging a hammer, and then all of Morris's bedding moved out of the cell. Outside, with a metal detector check, the warden is in the cell. He pulls open the box, leaving the back of the vent exposed. The good thing is that Morris was well prepared to make the fake vents look so good that it was impossible to tell the difference. But when the warden noticed Morris' nervous expression or a hint of suspicion, he opened the box again and found nothing but an accordion. Outside, the prison guards found no contraband and left. But the warden had a nagging feeling that something wasn't quite right. So he decided to let Morris change cells the following week. However, the trouble is not over yet. Just when the prisoners were relaxing, Morris's enemy Derek came to the door. Morris once again used his superb intelligence to defuse the crisis. He used his jacket as a shield to hit the vitals. Soon, Derek was taken away by the guards, and the situation was not good. Maurice had to get out of here as soon as possible. I night, they began their journey to escape from prison. Unfortunately, they originally intended to go together. Dennis, nervous due to limb weakness, can only have been lying in bed in tears. Maurice and his two companions are fast. They quickly came under the barred window, pulling each other to climb up. And this way, the three of them came to the rooftop without any danger. Dodging the searchlights, when Dennis finally got up the courage to kick the vent, the three had already escaped further and further. Dennis came under the barred window and realized that he alone could not escape because of his own cowardice and weakness. He lost the opportunity to leave here forever. At this point, the three had come to the edge of the rooftop crawling down the pipe to the bottom, and managed to reach the barbed wire fence. But it was already the last line of defense. They are free, strong pain over the barbed wire fence. Having broken free from this net, the three finally arrived at the beach, took out the life raft converted from raincoats, and blew apart into it taking advantage of the vast night. They swam into the sea. By the next day, when it was time for roll call, Morris still did not respond at all. When he went in to check, it was too late. Only a fake hat fell to the ground. The guard panicked and immediately blew his whistle, and the prison immediately pulled. The alarm remembered the entire island, the entire coastline, and that there was no trace of the three men. From this day on, no one has seen them escape from Yakala. Based on a true story, the story takes place in the United States, on a place known as Hell Island. Yakala has only seen 14 attempts to escape since its inception, and all of them have failed, earning the prison the reputation of being impossible to escape. Until 1961, three criminals unknowingly and unwittingly succeeded in escaping from prison, while the police investigated for 10 years and failed to determine whether they were alive or dead. The year after they escape, Yakala was permanently closed and is now a tourist attraction.